hello guys welcome back to my youtube channel so in this video we are going to look at nested for loops basically a nested for loop is a for loop inside another for loop as you can see here we have this for loop that's inside another for loop yes so now trying to explain how this here would work it's going to be a bit tricky but i will try my best to break it down as simply as i can yes if that makes sense so i'll just paste this here so we know that um our code is going to run from it's going to start from from the start till the finish is going to go from up till down so basically um the for loop if you look at a normal for loop on its own it will run everything at the same at once and print those values down but now what's going to happen is this we know that um, in this case let's see what we, 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 we need to expect here the values we need to expect I already explained how um, these here work but I won't break them down like I did in the previous video so if you watch the previous video it will be easier for you to understand so basically since our i starts by one we know to expect that our, our um, iterations will start from one and then go to two and um, not not two we start by zero we go to one and then we end by two due to the fact that um it says i should be smaller than three and two is smaller than three and three is not smaller than three so basically we only have zero one and two these are the values we hope to expect now in terms of in the case of j what what can we expect so again now iteration starts by when j is equals to zero so we're gonna start by zero and then we're going to it's plus plus which means plus one so we're gonna get to one are we gonna get to two no we're not gonna get to two because it says j must be smaller than two and one is smaller than two so basically it's the last iteration so now we need to remember something though when the for, when when this is executed it starts from here right it prints out zero okay it doesn't print out zero because uh okay yeah. it doesn't print out zero because i didn't say alert zero right it will not print out anything but um it will start by zero we know that our i is zero in the first iteration it will come in here it will check j j is also zero so we know our first alert will be zero is to zero for i and j so we know that i will be zero here and j will be zero here but now mind you this the, this inner for loop is not done um uh with its iterations so it will carry on again it will come back to the same for loop and it will check the next value which is one and then our i is still zero in this case so it will print out i which is still zero and j which is one so now since now it is done since it is done with the uh, iterations here it will go back to the outer loop remember the outer for loop is not done it's still by zero and now it will go to the next value which is one and then it will check the i is one in in this case right now so it will put i as one and then it will repeat the same thing with the inner for loop the it will start by zero so it's going to be one is two j which is zero so in this case now j is zero then again it will run again to the next value of j which is one and it will be one is two one so guys i, I don't know if this makes sense but yeah it will run the outer for loop get the first value of i come into the inner for loop and run it until the inner for loop is done so it will print that outer for loops value first and then it will print whatever j is till it ends from as you can see here i was zero at first then it print out it printed out the values of j until the end then it went on to the next um, value of i which is one then it, it it iterated again the values of j zero to one then it went on again to the next value of i which is two and it iterated again the values of j so basically the outer for loop will carry on running until it it is completed even though the inner for loop will complete no matter how many times you see so yes guys i hope this makes sense so if we run this code it should give us 
zero 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 one let me actually make it appear just like this so i have to include a square bracket here put a comma and then it should show i and i should put a comma right here yes just a comma and just this amount yeah this much space and then put it should show our, our j and then lastly our last our last square bracket so if we have run this code it should give us exactly this right here so let's go let's do it f uh, 7 2 check if there is any errors and there is none so f5 let us see what we are going to get in this case okay there we go yes there you have it this is the exact same um output that i just showed in the previous in the meta editor so you, if you if you guys um not if you guys but yeah you guys can see that that is how the the the, the thing for loop works the nested for loop. we can go ahead and actually add another for loop inside this for loop so let me add another for loop and in this case we've used i we have used j let me use k use k i put s there i thought of my name sydney <laughs> but let's use small letter k and small letter k and let's say we want this to stop the iterations we want them to stop when i is smaller than three let's just say three yeah, let's just say three so in this case we know that we will expect um, zero what okay let me just do this zero one and two right that's what we're going to expect from this from the values of k so i'll just copy this paste it in here um and we'll we'll print j but after j we let's include i so it's going to be comma um, space and then comma and then k and then yeah and then k and then comma so basically we will have an addition now so let's try and break it down let me first remove this extra line here so I'm just editing. I like my 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 curly braces just like this. Yeah, just like this. I prefer them like this. So I'll just return these there. So now let's think about this again. So now we have three for loops. Oh, this is going to be a long one. So in the first instance, we're going to have i as zero. It's going to run. Then it's going to run this one. J is zero. Then it's going to go into the inner for loop and k is also zero right then again we'll come to the second part it's going to remember now in this case we have to finish this inner for loop before we can finish the outer for loop before we can also complete the outer outer for loop so then again um since we're done with the zeros this inner for loop will run again i and j are still zero let's not forget that so i is still zero and j is still zero but now the value of k will be one again i is still zero and k and uh, j is still zero and then the value of k now will be two so now we are done with in uh, uh with this with the iterations right here then we're gonna go to j remember j is not done so now j changes to i is still zero let's not forget i is still zero so now j changes to one and then we're gonna run um k again and j but let's not forget change to one and then i is still zero and i is still zero here i is still zero so j changed to one but then let's not forget again the inner for loop needs to be completed first right and two you see and then let me just copy and paste 
and then i is still zero but now j j changes to two basically two and the same thing repeats for um oh there is no oh this there is no value of two there so yeah j is complete j has completed so since j has completed the outer for loop will run again let's copy this but now instead of i being zero again i will be one i will be one i will be one because now the inner for loops have completed we're going to start remember the outer for loop hasn't completed yet we still need to get to one then we need to still get to two so then the same the same thing repeats itself basically so i becomes one and then and then again until i becomes two yeah i becomes two uh let me just do this Uh, so if let's run this now let's run this and see what we get okay so yeah this was a long one yo i won't even lie so let me just use an alert again to separate whatever we did um the previous example we just did so they don't stack together so put an empty string and put my semicolon and then let's run this it's probably going to be long but let's just run it and let's separate it after the iteration is completed just like this so we can get this uh, separation and then the separation so let's get this alert in there empty string to get the separation and there we go let's f7 to just compile and see oh first i have to stop debugging f7 there's an error what is wrong somewhere what is the problem did i make a mistake somewhere let's see um line two let's see line two it can't be line two it cannot be line two so where is the problem at let me try and see if i can find the problem mm. i can't seem to find what the problem is so we have our curly braces. What seems to be the problem? Oh. Let's see. Okay, let's just run it and see what happens. F5. Oh. Where is the operand? I think I put something wrong somewhere. Where is it? Operand expected. Where is operand? Line 10. Line 10. Oh, yes. K. I somehow deleted the value of K. Hey, guys. You see how easy it is for mistakes to happen. And you'll be looking for it, wasting time looking for it. That time it was a small minor mistake. And now there's no more errors <laughs> so yes let's run this code and see what it gives us so we first had have the set uh the set of zeros so zero 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 so i remain zeros in this case and then like i said j has to finish uh iterating as well just like the inner inner one which is k as you can see and then um we get to the set of ones basically the same thing set of twos basically the same thing so guys i hope the nested for loop makes sense you can even add more for loops inside and within the for loop i don't know if i can call this is it matrix is it matrix matrices or matrix yeah i don't know something like that but yeah this is basically nested for loops guys I hope it made sense. You can put it down on paper so you can better, uh, you can understand it better, basically, yes. So, yes, guys, that is it for this video. And, yeah, I'll catch you in the next video. Please don't forget to like, comment, and share the video. And most importantly, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you, guys, and have a lovely one.